All right, well, I have, a, I have a question from an inspector. Now, this is a question I get quite a bit, but this one came in when I told him we were gonna be doing some interviews with you. Uh, and he says, I'm having trouble accepting the idea of a call center. I feel like my clients wanna talk to me, only me, and that I'll do a better job closing a sale than a call center ever would. Any words of wisdom or advice on that? I was that same guy. I believed, when I started out 24 years ago as a man in a van, I believed that no one could answer the phone better than me. Truth is, I still think that's correct. Here's the challenge. I couldn't answer the phone and do a home inspection and visit real estate offices all at the same time. So I relinquished and had staff do it. Then I got to the opinion, no one on the planet can answer the phone better than my own staff. And I found that had its limitations, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the position I've come to is this, a well-chosen call center, and we don't even use the word call center in my office, we call it scheduling team. Just some of the members are in the building and some of the members candidly are in your building. We see no difference, we make no delineation. We track the close rate of every single individual who answers the phone, whether it's in your building or my building. And the truth of it is, my building outperforms your building by about 3%. That's not too bad. I mean, so you're saying if your building is closing at 90%, we're closing at 87 or something along those lines. 3% difference. So the challenge in that, with the, the mindset that says a rising tide lifts all boats, your staff, Adam Colton, is working directly with my staff, Ryan, to rise the performance level of both buildings. That's the mindset you have to come from it. Because the, the for a 3% difference or even a 10% difference to have seven days a week, 24 hours a day is mind boggling. And let me share with you some things about flexibility. When we wanna have my entire staff in a meeting, all hands, we don't need to do that at six in the morning or six o'clock at night. We just flip the switch and it happens in this building and it works just perfectly. If all lines are busy and we're really proud, we have 12 total lines in our office, if all 12 are lit up, what happens to customer number 13? It rolls to your building. And for a 3% or a 10% difference, that's okay. And the funny thing, Nathan, you may not realize this, we track this week to week, my staff and, and your staff, and it's almost like a competitive uh, game that goes on of, who beat who and who did what, and we dissect that. And we listen to the calls that happen here in your building and go, ooh, we can bring that back into our building. So that yes, we would always like to stay ahead of you, but more importantly, we wanna to continue to rise and climb and rise and climb and close more business by having essentially a boundless staff capacity. You know, you said something in there that I say to inspectors all the time. If you're going to hire my call center staff, and, and we are very quickly, if we're not the biggest, we're close to being the biggest in the call center business, uh, we'll be there soon. We have, I think we're at four teams. They're all sorts of colors, like Magento or whatever. I think they go by color names. Um, you know, they're very competitive with each other and they work with the inspectors. And the, and the way that a client should work with their call center, so you being the client, is they, they should say, here's what I want for my business and you know I'm tracking what you're doing how can I help you to be more effective for me and I think you've done that very well I'll give credit to a couple of inspectors out there that you know were with us early on when we were really learning the game and they taught us a lot um, Preston Sandlin and uh, and Meg home inspection Carolina they uh, they they taught us how to be a, a big call center solution for a big company I was with you early on also I was with you early on and I was disappointed and I left. See, Preston did your work for you. He did and I'm grateful to Preston for that and many, many other things, but it's very honest to say uh, at, the, at the cutting edge of, of something new, you gotta be ready to bleed. And, and we bled, you bled, I went back and licked my wounds, you know, and, and we healed and it, and it got stronger. Well, and you know, if you do something for 10 years, and any inspector will tell you this, you know, you do it for 10 years, you get pretty good at it. Uh, another guy that helped us a lot, I mean, a, a guy that was on the phone with us every day to say, 
you know, it would be better if you did this, it'd be better if you did this, is uh, John Valella with yeah. All Pro in New yeah, York. John that guy, he, he did uh, very well for us. So, um, you know, so, so that's good advice. If you, um, if you didn't have an office staff tomorrow, let's just say, you know, the worst case scenario happened, your town in Florida, which is basically underwater now, yeah. um, goes a full four feet underwater uh, for some period of time, some short period of time and then your office is knocked out, you gotta invest in technology again, you're waiting for insurance claims. Would you trust our call center to take the calls for a month? Yes, yeah, and we do that on a regular basis. I don't worry about this anymore. You know, especially, you know, the smaller you are, the more vulnerable you are. If you've got one person answering, one person answering the phone, and whether something good or bad happens to that person and they can no longer be there to perform with you, you've got a significant, significant problem. By having the partnership between my building and your building, I'm not vulnerable to anyone as it relates to answering the call. I'm not vulnerable to weather. I'm not even vulnerable to Comcast. If my stuff stops working, either because of technology or because of weather or because someone went kooky in my office and took a day off or got sick or went on vacation for two weeks, it has no impact on my bottom line. All right, speaking of bottom line, I'll ask you a tough one. Maybe you've. Uh... I have a feeling you've analyzed this. Um, on a cost per inspection basis, is it more expensive to have your staff answer the call or my staff? It's more expensive to have my staff. All right, but they're doing other things. So, you know, I don't want them to see this video and think their job's you know endangered. No, it's, and it's a fascinating thing. We've made the decision internal. We have five people in the office that we will not grow the size of our internal local staff for phone answering. That's a good call. We're, we're gonna grow the size of the staff for outside sales and other things that we're doing internal to the company, but there's no reason for us to invest in additional space and additional technologies, and frankly, additional hiring and other headaches when we've already got 20 plus people in our adjunct staff. And, and here's the craziest thing. There's, this, there's, this, there's a level of comfort, false comfort, that comes from looking over and seeing the person or knowing they're on the other side of the wall. Well, very candidly, w once they're out of arm's length, the difference between, you know, 100 feet and 600 miles doesn't matter at all. It just doesn't matter. Well, now we're getting into some advanced business calculation stuff. You know, the number of orders that come in in an hour will vary greatly um, seasonally. Yes. Time of day. Yes. Day of the week, um, you know, and for us handling, you know, hundreds of companies, we see exactly what that is. I mean, you know, our averages, we can calculate that out. We can schedule people and we know how many calls we're likely to get. But you've figured out that at five people in your size business and someone watching this, it might be one office staff member, right. it might be two. Um, that's how many people you can keep busy on phone calls, reviewing admin stuff, doing office work, reaching out to agents, you know, all the things you can fill that much time with that many people. Beyond that, you kick it over to us. And on our side, we're not wasting time either. So all of those folks that are sitting there um, waiting for a call to come in when we go into a low volume uh, part of the hour, a, a dip or a lull, you know, they're typing in recall check reports. They're, you know, doing other office admin stuff for us. So it's a very efficient model and a good partnership. So we appreciate you being a client on it. Well, I will tell you, there's, there's other things that happened that I didn't anticipate when we made that change. It's been six months or a year ago. In order to have your staff prepared to receive our information, all of our processes, all of our scripting, all of our packaging, all the data that we had in, in ISN, we could no longer wing it. It needed to be correct because if we had junk in our systems that put your folks in a position to try to interpret junk to close business for us. So we got much better internal by doing the things we needed to do systemically and process wise so that your staff could seamlessly integrate and take care of it. I'll give you a stat now because uh, this one is very interesting. It's a huge change from 10 years ago. Uh, ever since we put the call center sign up and the free trial up at inspectionsuccess.net, you just press the button for call center, we get 20, 30 companies a month that will start up uh, a trial. And it used to be that we would retain around 
40% of them. So they would go through their trial, and for whatever reason, whether they didn't use it or we just you know, fell flat on our face, whatever it was, we had about a 40% retention rate. Our retention rate last year was 97%. And you think that's my staff working with your staff to I think it's your process? staff, I think it's Megan <laughs> Preston's, I think it's John Valella. I think it's uh, you know putting in the the right staff. You know, a long time ago, uh, you know, a decade ago, we were hiring people at, you know, a certain hourly rate that was kind of that entry level yeah. office admin. And one day we said, "You know what? This isn't working. We're just going to try something different. We're going to pay, you know, really a pretty premium rate." for office admin staff and start recruiting some people from these high-end call centers. And once we did that, total change, total change. Right. You know, I discovered that in my own business. You have, when you pay a person, seldom do you get it perfect and you end up bracketing. You either overpaid or you underpaid. If you've overpaid, all you have really lost was the margin between what you thought you should have paid and that a little bit of extra. If you underpay and they don't pan out, you've lost everything. I'd far rather make the mistake of overpaying than underpaying. Uh, a good lesson on any topic. Yes.